Hello and welcome back to another episode of Video Game Easter Eggs, the series where we take a look at some of the latest and not so latest Easter eggs in video games, with the only rule being they cannot have featured on my channel before. In today's video, we discover a touching tribute in Team Fortress 2, we find a weapon that could be pretty useful in Bigfoot, and we get the feeling we're being watched in Dead by Daylight. As always, if you think you know of an Easter egg that I'm yet to cover, then the best place to let me know is in the comment section or on my social media accounts, the links to which are in the description. Oh, and if you are enjoying this series, then a like is really appreciated. Anyway, without further delay, let's get started. So first up, let's take a look at Streets of Rage 4. The long-awaited sequel to Streets of Rage 3 sees you return to Wood Oak City to take down Mr. X's children, the predictably named Y-Twins. Anyone familiar with the previous games in the series will be right at home here, as the gameplay has been pretty much left untouched. And let me be clear, that's not a bad thing. It's been a long time since I played a 2D brawler, but there's just something so satisfying about destroying a screen full of bad guys, then eating a turkey that you found in a dumpster. Anyway, the first of the two easter eggs found in Streets of Rage 4 can be pretty easy to miss. At the beginning of the fifth level, you can spot this. So this graffiti shows a rat along with purple, blue, orange and red turtles. Also nearby is a toxic looking green liquid. So this graffiti is obviously a reference to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the liquid, as well as being a stage hazard, could be a nod to the ooze that turned the turtles into crime fighting heroes. The next easter egg is just as tricky, if not trickier to find. During multiple levels of the game, you can find arcade cabinets that allow you to travel to boss fights from Streets of Rage 2. For example, on level 2, if you defeat the guard with the taser and then hit the arcade cabinet with the taser, this will happen. So this is the Jack mini boss fight from Streets of Rage 2, complete with a CRT filter to add to that retro feel. Up next is a game that has one of the most in-depth rocket launch sequences in video games. Deliver Us the Moon is a story-driven action-adventure game set in the near future, where the world's resources are nearly depleted. This has caused the nations of the world to create the Worldwide Space Agency, with astronauts being sent to the moon to secure the future of mankind. It's currently available on Game Pass, and despite it being quite slow in places, it's definitely worth a playthrough. The first easter egg in Deliver Us the Moon can be found by looking through the telescope in Rolf Robertson's sleeping quarters. So if you wait long enough, you can see a teddy bear floating through space. The next two easter eggs can be found on the moon itself, with the first one being this. So this setup is an obvious nod to the conspiracy theory that the moon landing was a hoax. Though I'm not quite sure why you would need a green screen or even to fake the landing at all if you were already on the moon in the first place. The next easter egg to find on the moon is this.
So this strange looking object is actually the monolith from the Stanley Kubrick film 2001 A Space Odyssey. The final easter egg from Deliver Us The Moon is one that covers the IT, Titanic or Back to the Future easter egg that we must include in every episode of this series. Near the end of the game you can find this. So it seems that literally nowhere is safe from Pennywise the Clown, not even space. Up next is a game that we've covered before. In episode 16 of this series, we try to end our hunt for Bigfoot early by searching for him on our in-game tablet. Yeah, that didn't go too well. If we're going to take Bigfoot down though, I think we're going to need more than a simple rifle that's where this could come in handy. So of course this is Thor's hammer Mjolnir. As is the case in most games the hammer has featured in, we are unfortunately unable to use it. Back to the simple rifle it is. Up next is a game that I feel should have way more easter eggs than it actually does. With all the characters and locations that are borrowed from film and TV, it just feels like there should be more to find. Anyway, it's only been quite recently that I found myself getting into Dead by Daylight, with both the killer and survivor experiences being pretty fun. Being a survivor in particular is pretty tense, as you always have the feeling you're being watched. Well, on the Sanctum of Wrath map, whether you're a killer or a survivor, you probably are. So much like the Weeping Angels from Doctor Who, the statues will follow your character's movements. Of course the Weeping Angels themselves are no stranger to games, with The Witcher 3 plus many more games referencing them over the years. So this next easter egg is pretty sad. On the 8th of April, voice actor Rick May passed away. Now you may not know of Rick by name but you will have almost certainly heard his voice. Whether it's his role as the soldier in Team Fortress 2 or as Peppy the Hare in Star Fox. Well, as a tribute to Rick's passing, the guys at Valve decided to add these soldier statues to certain maps in the game. All men gave some, some men gave more than some. This isn't the only tribute to Rick either, as in the main menu, along with a saluting soldier, you can also hear this. The final easter egg for today's video comes from Star Wars Battlefront 2. Despite all of the issues the game had at launch, the current version of the game is actually pretty good. Battlefront 2 recently got its final update and with the update came new maps, features and skins and, luckily for us, a couple of new easter eggs. The first of which can be found on the First Order Star Destroyer. So this uniform is the same uniform that Kylo Ren wore while undercover as Matt the Radar Technician in the hilarious Saturday Night Live undercover boss kit. Hi, I'm Matt, I'm a Radar Technician. 
The ironing droid is a reference to this scene from The Last Jedi where it looks as if a ship is landing, but it's just an iron. So this next easter egg is my favourite type of easter egg, one that requires multiple different steps to solve. On the Takadana map you can find a message written in Arabesh, Arabesh being the alphabet used in Star Wars. This message translates into, the pirate is hiding something. Well in one of the rooms in the castle you can find a painting of Hondu Anaka, a famous pirate in the Star Wars universe. If you shoot the painting, this will happen. Defend the objective. So the painting drops a coin. Pick it up and head to Slave 1, where you can find three interactable buttons. Press them in the order that I do for this to happen. Guard the objective. So if done correctly, three lights will appear with the left one blinking five times, the middle one not blinking at all and the right light blinking just the once. This is a reference to the 501st Legion, the flag of which can be found back at the castle. So head back to the castle and if you look between the purple and orange flags you will see the 501st flag. Carefully jump onto it and push the button. Finally, head downstairs to access a secret room that was previously locked. So inside the room is a painting of the Battlefront 2 development team, which is a nice touch. But that's not all. If you manage to complete this easter egg in co-op mode, instant action won't work I'm afraid, you will unlock the hooded ray skin. As I said, these easter eggs are my favourite easter eggs in games, and I feel that this was a pretty good send off for Battlefront 2. So that's it for today's video, if you enjoyed it then a like is really appreciated and if you are a fan of easter egg secrets and small details in video games then perhaps consider subscribing as that's what this channel is all about. As always thank you all for watching and I'll speak to you all soon.